In this video, we're gonna walk you through posing mistakes when sitting and how to fix them. What's up, my friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to SLR Lounge. This is my friend, Chelsea, who we will link up in the video. You guys should check out her work. And uh, look, we're gonna walk you guys through kind of common posing mistakes, particularly for sitting poses. And we're gonna kind of cover this from a masculine, feminine body language standpoint. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Yeah, all of it. So I'm gonna save the deeper conversation on this towards the end of the video. The reason why we teach posing from the standpoint of body language is because when you understand what it is that you're trying to convey, the message you're trying to tell, posing is identical regardless of who your subject is. And I'm gonna explain that as we go through here. So let's go ahead and start with number one. Okay, so one of the big mistakes is hanging feet. And it's not just hanging feet. You'll notice that this bar stool is a little bit too high to have Chelsea just hang her feet off. But this is whenever someone's also sitting deep onto a chair, okay? So what happens when you're sitting deep onto a chair is it pushes out on the thighs and your thighs look larger than they actually do. So the first thing that we wanna do is wanna have a person kinda of sit towards the edge of a chair or stool. And I mean, stools don't go to the edge, like, you know, you're in a good spot. But we wanna take the weight off of the thigh. So we're gonna have her bring her feet right up to the leg of that bar stool. Okay, so with the weight off of the legs, with the feet not dangling, then you have the thighs looking how they should. So that is number one. Now number two, okay, so if we are going for something more masculine, I would have my subject open out the legs. If we're going for something more feminine, I would have my subject narrow the legs, okay? This is the same when it comes to standing poses. And let me show you exactly what I mean. So if I actually bring this apple box in as a little posing object, and I have Chelsea put one foot over there and do a little like bra girl kind of, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So the vibe of this image is gonna be completely different because we've created essentially a masculine stance. Now we attach posing to gender identity, right? And really it shouldn't be. Posing is more so about the message we wanna convey. Do we wanna have this strong kind of bra girl kind of vibe to it? We just use these words because this is the language that we're kind of limited to, right? Or do we go for kind of a softer, more approachable, more feminine look by having her narrow the legs? So I'm gonna take this away. And she can do this in several ways. Like she's doing right now, she can cross the feet. She can also bring one leg up and over. But anytime we bring the legs in, we're basically diminishing the body, right? So once again, this applies to any subject. Because again, one of the other questions that I get asked is like, well, what about posing for plus-sized versus regular people? I'm like, it's the same. Look, your goals when you're posing plus-sized in general is gonna be to diminish, right? So we're gonna use body language that essentially diminishes versus opening out presence. It's all the same. So, okay, we got that covered. So we're gonna give you a more feminine kind of pose because I think that kind of matches your personality and also matches your attire, right? So if you were, if you, which you do have like a lot of really strong outfits, I would totally, if you've got a leather jacket on and you're kind of going straight up, I don't, I don't even know, what is that style? I can't speak. Edgy. Edgy, edgy. there you go. Edgy. Yeah, if we're going edgy, then I'm gonna give her a pose that's kind of much more opening out the stance, much more like kind of strong. strong. Yeah. And that's another funny word too, because people are like, oh, but you can be feminine and strong. And I'm like, damn it, we're not talking about like, we're talking about like the message we're conveying in a photograph, not somebody's personality, okay? So just, just relax, calm down. Linda, honey, listen, calm down. Okay, let's go to common mistake number three, and that's the spine. So let's go ahead and bring the feet back right there. And I wanna show a typical slouch that somebody might have. Oh, that's a good one. That was solid. You lost like four inches in that slouch. Yeah. Now go ahead and straighten the spine, okay? So straightening the spine is absolutely massive. Now let's do this. Let's turn the chair towards this little V flat for one second. So sitting up straight, I want you to slouch and lean forward just to show them what not to do. There, okay. So you can see that curve again in the spine. Now this go around, you're gonna go ahead and just straighten out the spine. And you can always tell your subjects, like imagine a string is pulling you up from the top of your head, right? So sit up straight in that, yes. The only issue here is that she can kind of look a little bit stiff, okay? 
So from here, I'm gonna have you hinge from the hip and just lean forward, there. Now you can lean forward as much as you want, you can bring it back, but the whole purpose is that her spine stays straight in that posture. Okay, so now let's go ahead and turn your chair back to the camera. Number four is I want you to pay attention to the body language in the hands. And let me show you exactly what I mean. So how would you, your, your hands are kind of resting in the middle right now, right? A, a very easy way to show that you're uncomfortable is to have both hands on opposite sides of the, yes. So this is the classic Asian portrait pose. I know this because I've had my portraits taken in China. Um, but this is like a very traditional kind of pose, and it's generally like an awkward, uncomfortable pose that people do, where their hands are what we would say is mirroring each other, right? But mirroring just means that they're doing the exact same thing. So that has sort of a, a feeling of like kind of, it's a little bit uncomfortable, a bit forced, right? But what if I said, I want you to tuck your hands between the legs and look shy. What would you do? Yes. So immediately what she did was brought the shoulders in, kept the arms straight and kind of closed the legs. And what's happening right now is we're doing things that we kind of have seen in children and we ourselves have done, right? This is the purpose of understanding body language so that you can actually know the message that's being conveyed in a photograph. So if I wanna display confidence, I actually wanna bring the hands up and pose them in a manner that looks confident. So what I'm gonna do is have you bring that leg up and over. So you kind of cross the legs, there you go. Do that same thing from the hips, you're gonna lean forward and hinge, there you go. Bring the hands in, perfect. So she's gonna bring the hands up and this is fantastic. She's kind of looking and, and coming into the camera. We can do a lot of different things with the face and the pose. One of the mistakes from here, and this is number five, is oftentimes in these positions, people break their wrists posing, okay? So they bend the wrist too far, okay? We wanna generally avoid these types of hard 90 degree angles on the wrist. So whether they're in, whether they're out, this is something to be avoided. So instead, what we wanna do is kind of soft bends in the wrist, okay? Soft fingers, soft elbows, uh, not soft elbows. Well, you know, we don't want rough elbows. <laughs> but soft wrists, okay? So kind of soft bends. So no matter what she does, I'm gonna be watching and paying attention for this or for this, because it's gonna unnaturally draw our attention to it. Number six, so since she has her hands up, this is a great place to mention not pressing the face into the hands. So show them like what that would be. Like if you were to press the face, so anytime we actually put weight onto the hands, it pushes out on the cheeks and it straightens, like kind of changes our, our, our face structure, right? So instead, whenever she does a pose, she can do something very similar and yet not rest the hands and we get to a place where the face looks how it should. You're not pressing the face against the hands, okay? Number seven, this goes to camera angle. So camera angle is a big part of the pose and the message that you're trying to convey. So let me show you. So if I have my camera angle right here, so this is basically her head height, right? So it's gonna be right here. This is neutral, right? When I bring this camera angle up, so it's kind of like right here shooting top down on her, this is generally gonna give you a softer kind of look to a photograph. When I bring the camera angle down low, this is gonna create more like a dominating look to a photograph. Now, I want you to think of this again from the standpoint of body language. Why do we think that way? Well, when you look upon somebody that has a crazy presence and stature, we're often looking up at them, right? And, well, when you're kind of looking at somebody who looks more approachable, more relatable, you're looking down towards them. And this is honestly where like a lot of our sayings come from. Like, don't look down on people. Are you, you know, looking down on me, like type stuff, right? or they've got their nose up, you know, that person's really stuck up. This is literally where it comes from, is this kind of sense of body language. So we can convey that through the photograph by simply controlling our camera angle. If I want more approachability, I'm gonna photograph up a little bit higher. If I want more strength and dominance over the frame, I'm gonna bring the camera down lower. And each of these is gonna control the image very differently. So, the last thing that I wanna mention is now that we know that kind of camera angle, there's one last piece to it, which is the chin and where the eyes are going. So when her chin, so if I bring the camera angle up, if her chin goes down and her eyes go up into the camera, this opens up the eyes and it helps with that kind of sense of relatability. If I'm bringing the camera down low and she goes chin up, we go back to that kind of stuck up kind of look where we have that 
air of confidence, that air of pride, and now she's looking down at the camera and this narrows out the eyes, okay? So what I want you guys to do is to tie all of these components together, okay? So what we're aiming at now is this nice, soft sort of feminine look to this photograph, to this particular shot. It has nothing to do with, like, it doesn't have to be a statement of who you are at all times. This is literally just this shot, right? So what we've done is we've matched the lighting for that look. I have here a Profoto B10 Plus that's on uh, a stand with just an umbrella. So this is gonna create a nice soft light. Why? Because I'm going for a soft and approachable kind of look to the image. I have a subtle uh, reflector just adding in, not a reflector, a V-flat just adding in a bit of white light to fill on this side. So it's gonna bounce back a little bit of that light. Now I'm gonna give her poses that fit into all those different pieces and watch what we get. Okay, so leaning forward, I love that. Ooh, let me, let me, let me just get over here. Bonus tip, I got a bonus tip here. This is tip number nine. You can have them interact with their clothing. So here, she's got this cool like turtleneck item. Have them like interact, make it part of the pose. Okay, perfect. Chelsea, I'm gonna have you bring your chin a little bit towards the light. I love that right there. I'm gonna bring the camera angle. It's a little bit low because of the background. So right now I want the background to be mostly that wall. So what I'm gonna tell her to do is bring the chin down so that her eyes are coming up towards the camera. Perfect. Yes. I love that. Perfect. Go ahead and brush the hair and bring it over one more time just to get all the flyaways. I love that soft wrists, that's fantastic. Easy. I hope this video was helpful. Now the piece that I want you to really walk away with is understanding and detaching the idea of posing from somebody's gender identity. Instead, I want you to attach and think of posing as relating to body language and what is the message that an image is supposed to convey. Because you as the photographer are not only gonna decide this, you're gonna base it also on who it is that you're photographing. What is the message that they want to convey through their images? When you approach posing from this standpoint, it's identical regardless of who it is that you're actually shooting. Hope you guys enjoyed. Now this was a little excerpt from our complete posing workshop. So if you guys enjoyed, jump onto slrloungeworkshops.com. We'll include links for that as well. This is part of the complete posing workshop that teaches you the nuances of posing regardless of who it is that you're posing. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel, check out Chelsea's work, and I'll see you guys back here same time, same place. Peace.